Hello friends, I'm Colonel Get Back to Work and this is Failure. Uh, we're in Derail Valley today and uh, and I've got another another question to answer. Now, I actually answered this question in a video rec I recorded yesterday that you didn't see, but I recorded it yesterday, but it ended up bouncing around so many different tangents and then tangenting from those tangents into a segue, uh, into, a, into a, a side alley uh, where it was promptly mugged by something that was almost off topic in nature, before then, rejoining the original track of what I was talking about to the extent that it was an incoherent rambling nonsense. Now you might ask yourself uh, how does that differ from this usual capering that you have going on? Okay well not much I'll be honest but it didn't make a lot of sense when I watched it back so uh, so I'm having another swing at it uh, which means uh, that I'm actually midway through a mission. I'll walk you through that and today's topic shortly after these important messages. Right then, okay, here's the here's the state of play. Here's my train. I, I mean, I, I figure you probably you clocked that. Uh, we've got uh, we got wagons going on here. And uh, if I bring up the job, if I can bring up the job without it accidentally bringing up my wallet instead, uh, we are heading to, where are we going? Manufacturing and Ding Dong. Uh, where are we? Just, there you go, Machine Factory in town. We're coming from Harbour. This pays 13 large, if I can get there in, pe in, in peace. If I can get there in one piece, uh, this will pay 13 large to show you where we reached. I've actually stopped on a downward slope, which will make it easy to get going. Uh, we are here. We're going to uh, we're going to head on up there. We're going to stay right. We're going to stay. Whoop, we're going to stay right. Uh, we're then going to hook around, head on up this way. Yeah, yeah. Refuel somewhere, either farm or oil well central. Could be either, maybe both. Uh, then you've got city southwest before toddling up in this direction. Will we get there today? I don't know, but we'll give it a solidly good try. So uh, let's turn the atomic batteries to power and the turbines to speed. Crank her on up and uh, get a door open. Not that you need the doors, because if you're wearing a magic science helmet, apparently doors are too complicated. Um, all right, we'll turn that on. <laughs> I'm so down. I'm... Someone has already submitted a question about my uh, my love of magic science helmets. Um, we'll get to it. We'll, we'll be there at some point. Uh, and uh, and we'll all delight in that together. Now, if this is a, a big slope, we should start rolling. Guess not. Okay, well, fine. We'll use some throttle then. Come on, toddle on. That should be enough to get us moving. Come on, this is a slope. It's a slope. Come on. There you go. We're moving. Yeah, I know, but we haven't got all day. Let's go. Thump it a bit. Because we are a little heavier than usual. Now, I read somewhere, I'll get on topic in a moment, uh, I read somewhere that the, the weight rating uh, for this individual locomotive is 400 tonnes. How true that is, I've no idea, but that's the, uh, that's the, uh, that's the theory anyway. Right, let's go, uh, let's go topicking, shall we? Uh, it comes from McGilly, today's question, uh, and it's part two of what do you do for a living? Uh, wouldn't you like to know? Well, I'm going to tell you. Uh, I'm really interested, says McGilly, to hear what a community manager is. I'm so far removed from this type of career, it's just not clear to me. You kind of go, oh, okay, that's valid. Um, because it's a, uh, it is, it is peculiar uh, community management um, in that, so I'll start where I finished yesterday. Community management's weird in the games industry. The games industry were the first to have community managers. Uh, because communities of players were forming around individual games. Um, so community manager as a discipline started with games. Um, and it started late 90s. Late 90s is when it really, really started off. And, uh, and, and, and marketing people mostly would understand, actually, it would be good to have someone looking after these groups of players who were chatting with one another. Uh, and so that we can be part of that conversation. And so community managers sprung up, but the, the upshot is that there aren't any senior, super experienced community people out there. There are more now than there have ever been, but they're, uh, 
but there aren't really very many senior roles for community experts uh, because well twofold right I'm going to cover this off and then I'll talk about what it actually is uh, twofold um, is that firstly community management is tough it's very very tough I routinely call it the toughest game uh, the toughest job in the games industry because it is it is the hardest job in the games industry it's also one of the most fun when things are going right but most of the time it's just tough it is just a tough gig to be in uh, because your job is to make people as happy as you possibly can with what you've got which often isn't a huge amount uh, so uh, so community managers once they start building up some experience they're, they're getting ripped down, torn up, and spat out uh, from the from doing the job. It is emotionally exhausting. Um, and then secondly, uh, it doesn't pay very well. Uh, it's it's one of the it's just above entry scale in terms of pay. If you go in as a, a junior community manager, you are there. You know, you'll be paid a similar amount to a QA tester or someone who works in customer service. And those two areas I'm not calling them out because they have people who aren't paid very much in them it's more that those are the two main entry points into the games industry for those who are I'm going to say unskilled and I don't mean that in a bad way but those without specific gaming expertise or publishing expertise so marketing and retail and uh, and lawyers and contract experts and all of that kind of business they have expertise to be a QA tester or to work in customer service, you need to be literate, you need to be numerate, and uh, being clean and polite, that helps too, but quite often, that's not a deal breaker. Um, <laughs> so there you go. So that's, that's the fundamental. So community manager these days, it's not much beyond those um, in terms of, uh, of entry. But because community managers interact with every other part of the games industry, from development to publishing, to legal, to customer service, to the retail team, to the art team, to everyone, no other part of the business touches as many different departments as community management does. Not one, because community managers are the representatives of the players within the company. They are where the rubber meets the road. The rubber of the game, the road, the players. They are the, the conduit between those two forces. And as a result of working with so many different departments, community managers will often sidestep into another gig that pays better and is far less stressful. The good ones tend to stick around a little bit longer and then they find there are no senior positions available. Uh, senior positions tend to be occupied by marketing people or uh, or producers or 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 but quite often it's occupied by people who have never done the job community directors pretty rare pretty rare more senior senior directors or uh, vice presidents or anything along those lines almost unheard of and so once you've got a lot of expertise you, uh, you, you sidestep into doing something else if you, uh, if you are in pursuit of a better gig and, uh, and quite often, given how draining it is, you are. Right, what's a community manager then? Okay, there you go, I've finished with that. Draw a line under it, let's delineate between topics. What is a community manager? The best community managers aren't made, they're born. You are born to do this stuff. You have a knack for it. You've got a flair for it. And fundamentally, you're good at talking to people on the internet. You're good at it. Uh, the best community managers I've ever hired have built a community of their own without realizing that's what they've done. And certainly that's true of me. Uh, and yes, I am a very good community manager. Might sound like blowing my own trumpet, but as I have oft as I have oft said on this channel, if you don't know what you're good at, then learn. Because uh, if you're waiting for someone else to tell you what you're good at, they're going to tell you you're good at everything if they want to impress you, uh, and uh, they're going to tell you the wrong stuff. They're going to go, oh no no no, you're tops at hairstyling. 
and you'll go, oh great, I'm tops at hairstyling, and you might be awful at hairstyling, and they'll tell you it just because they like you. Um, so you have to know for yourself what are you good at, what are you, what's your, what's your thing, what were you put here to do, and in my case, talking on the internet, I was properly good at it. Uh, talking on the internet and getting random people to join in on various escapades, I've, I've, I've just got a knack for it. it and uh, uh, the one thing I have learned is that if I take my foot off the gas and stop pushing on a madcap scheme that I'm pursuing that people have decided to pile on with and uh, join in the fun, they all disappear. So, uh, so that fun only exists while I'm powering it through. And that's a community starter. Uh, I got my start. Uh, this is how I got started in the games industry, but it's also how I got started in community management. Same story. I started out by playing Battlezone on a dial-up modem uh, under the name Colonel Failure, which was a, a name I took from the collectible card game Netrunner in the early 1990s. Colonel Failure was a really hardcore card. I really liked the art on the card, and I thought it sounded awesome. Because it's a play on words. Kernel as in a computer kernel, spelt with a K. Failure as in crashing it. Uh, and that's, you know, it was hardcore and awesome. And it turned out I wasn't very good at the game. Um, and therefore I was getting beaten up by people that had uh, spent donkey's years playing Quake and the like. Uh, and, uh, and so I started a clan for people who weren't very good at the game. And I got quite a few members quite quickly. Uh, I taught myself web design that's to one side but as part of that uh, I figured I went like all these other clans they seem to have message boards so I taught myself the programming necessary to set up forums um, I didn't write the forum software no 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 you get something off the shelf I mean it might be uh, might be public domain but uh, I don't call it public domain it might be what's it called holy cow um, well, it might be the unpaid for stuff. The public, something or other. Crikey, my mind's gone completely blank. I know this term inside out. Anyway, I learned how to set those up. And, uh, and pretty soon I was, running, I was running forums for my clan. And then uh, there was a competitive system, uh, a ladder, as they were called back in the day, uh, for Battlezone. And it was fraught with fighting and just yelling at each other and it was genuinely quite an unpleasant place to be uh, and there weren't that many clans there weren't that many active players online uh, at that time um, and uh, I mean you're probably talking you know three four five hundred people in total uh, and 20 clans uh, of people I do want to turn here I am moderately to positively certain of that hold on yeah, yeah, you wanted this left. We've gone left, right? We've gone left, left. Okay. Brakes off. Yeah, we are still rolling. This is good. This is not using fuel. Oh, maybe I won't need to refuel. Yeah, we're only on half a tank, son. Yeah, you know, we'll probably be all right. Um, yeah, massive amounts of infighting. So uh, so I set up a, a, total, a totally standalone, brand new ladder system for all of these clans who wanted to be involved in competitive play but didn't want all of the unpleasantness that was going on with the existing competitive system uh, and I had a decent reputation already because hey I ran the clan that didn't mind losing you know we'd always play hard it's not like we would play to lose deliberately no 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 we'd always play to win we just weren't very good at it uh, right at the next one no, 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 left, left, your other right. I'll double check. Left, thank you. Uh, okay, too fast, going too fast. Just tick all the brakes on a little bit. That's all right, the, the signal's already set, which is fortunate. I didn't really have enough time to get out there to tweak it. You're going to want to tweak this one, though. Don't be too late. You sure you needed to do that? You might have gone down the wrong side of this stop. Well, we'll find out, won't we? Well, yeah, well, I, I rather think we will. I rather think we have. I think you want to go through that bit over there. Oh, dear. You might be able to get through under there. Yeah, all right. Well, let's have a look. 
it might have uh, it, it might have buffers at the end of it so we'll just have to we'll keep an eye out for that I'd rather not go backwards unless I absolutely have to but uh, but that's something that's certainly possible so yeah so I'd set up this ladder all of the clans joined and uh, and I ran a tight ship in terms of keeping the conversation clean and polite and I ran tournaments and all the sorts of stuff we wanted to do ran 24-hour tournaments because this was a worldwide setup you know there were players from well you name it everywhere around the world and uh, and therefore we ran a 24-hour 24-hour uh, tournament a lot of it was based on trust uh, in terms of you know reporting your results and stuff like that and because of the nature of the beast lots of people were on board with you know there, there was a lot of trust and a lot of decency between people who had previously been yelling at each other all the time because they knew that I was policing it I had no powers to police in game at all none whatsoever there were no private servers there was nothing along those lines um, but uh, it was it's in the same way as if you play uh, in a sports league at the weekend you know an amateur sports league doesn't matter what the sport is you are choosing to respect the referee or the umpire or whoever it is that is blowing the whistle to call plays dead or to you know award a penalty or whatever it is you have decided to respect their position and and you grant sorry I've got a really itchy nose um, and uh, and award them the authority to get that done and I was lucky enough that uh, that the players in this ladder had chosen to do the same thing. It was called the Battle Zone Federation, for those of you who want to know. And why did I build any of this stuff? Because I wanted it. I I wanted to have a uh, I wanted to have a clan of people who were like-minded to hang around with. Um, and given my own lack of ability. Uh, I saw a gap in the market, effectively, for other people that thought, like, you know what? Yeah, I'm not too bothered about winning. And therefore, having a good time and being a good sport was our, uh, the, was our kind of credo. And you lead that from the front, and, and people follow along with it. Uh, anyway, uh, out of that, I, uh, with, I, I ended up uh, with a couple of friends making two more federations for other games, so Homeworld, we ran a, a federation for that as well. What was the third one? I can't remember what the third one was. No, it only ever reached planning, we never launched it. Um, but they weren't quite as successful, but it was okay. I mean, it, it, we weren't, look, we, did, we had those notions. This was, the, this was like the year 1998. You know, everyone starting up a dot com of some kind, and we were going, like, <gasps> maybe this could turn into something. Doubtful. Uh, right, where are we going at the next one? Uh, right, we're here. Yep. Yeah. Hold your course, go through the middle. If you want to refuel, now is your now is your time. You could do it in city, which gets you close, or you could risk going all the way to machine factory to do it. No, no, no. I'll do it here, and all I'll do is I'll park the train up. I'll go to the uh, to the job terminal, and uh, I'll pay the fees, and I'll top it back up again. Simples, simples. Uh, yeah. So then, coming out of that, I did more or less the same kind of thing in Ultima Online. And as you know from previous backstories, is that's how I ended up in the games industry. Is that uh, EA were looking for a, a webmaster? I was making websites galore and running communities in Ultima, and so that was a it was a natural fit. Uh, the interesting thing was. I didn't know that what I was doing was called community management because as far as I was concerned now I was running a I was running a ladder or I was running a clan or I was running a guild or whatever it is uh, I didn't know that there was a, a job title associated with it uh, and and so yeah, I was very happy building websites it made me uh, made me just deliriously happy to be being paid by the games industry I wasn't paid very well uh, are you about to send me the wrong way? No, you're gonna you're gonna keep me going down the middle, which is what I want. And there's the station house. Uh, some of you said that I left some money in the old drop box in the last place, so I'll stop by the lost and found as well, just in case I did. I can't rule out whether I did or if I didn't, but uh, I'll assume, for the sake of argument, that you people watching know what the heck's going on. 
because I very rarely do. Right, let's go get this done. Um, yeah, so so in a nutshell, that's what community management is. Is It's finding a group of people who have uh, shared interests and operating or... No, 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 it turns out, turns out you were right. It's because I tried to pay my fees uh, and then didn't hit accept at the end. See, I think that sticking your wallet in is enough to uh, to pay your fees. Anyway, let's uh, let's get this done. Hopefully, this does the refueling. Yep, certainly looks like it. Uh, ha! There's an interesting thing. If I were to do multiple jobs and not pay the fees. The most I'll ever have to pay is seven thousand six hundred. This is not a, this is not a well designed system. Okay, no, 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 I'm into it though. But that's a cheeky hacks. So if I were to get to the end of this, I'd run up more costs on my existing train, and I'd still only have to pay seven thousand six hundred. Right. Okay. Yeah. Confirm that. Confirm that. Get your wallet out. Slap it in there. Confirm. Well, put the wallet away. Confirm that. Thank you. Right. And uh, if my assumption is correct, I am now tops back up with the old fuel. All right. So let's fast forward a bit. Right. I'm now a. I'm now a professional. I'm being paid by a company to be a community manager. Uh, what does that entail on a regular basis? All right. Ready. Here is the the grand statement about what a community manager actually is community managers are the gatekeepers between two sets of very emotional people on the one hand you have gamers they're very emotional they are passionate about that thing you've given them they love it they hate it they love it they love it they hate it they love each other they hate each other they love you they think you're horrible all of that, you're looking after them. Um, nothing wrong with being emotional. Emotional is is all important. If they don't care, then your game has got nothing. If they didn't care, they wouldn't say anything. In which case, your game has got nothing. I am brakes off, right? No. I am put that brake on. I think the train did it automatically while you were paying for it. Oh, okay. Well, whatever. Um... All right, so it's gatekeepers between two sets of very emotional people. The other group of emotional people are the company. And they're emotional because they don't necessarily speak and or understand gamer. Now, I don't mean that in the sense of, oh, I can't fathom what they're saying. When he says, I hate you, why is this not working? Is that what he means? And the answer is, no, it's not what he means. Uh, but if you take that at face value, it's going to cause you to be upset. If you've just spent the last three months burning extra hours at weekends in order to get the game out, you're pretty pleased that the game's out, you're pretty pleased with the quality of the game, and the first thing you hear back from the players is, your game's crap, mate. It's not going to ride too well, and therefore you don't want these people bumping heads against each other too much, because... Your developer is knackered and emotionally attached to the thing that they've been working on. Positively, negatively, emotionally attached. Either way. And at the same time, you don't want them being confronted by a ravening horde. Which is what you're going to get. I don't care how good your game is, you're going to get a ravening horde. You can have overwhelmingly positive reviews. And there will still be a bunch of them that deliver your game's crap, mate. Uh, on it, Paraphrased in a multitude of different ways. And they're not wrong to say that. Because as much as it pains me every time I see some dingus on Steam having played 1,500 hours of a game only to give it a not recommended, you just kind of go, isn't that more an indictment of you than it is anything else? You've just wasted 1,500 hours on it. But still not wrong to do so. People are allowed to feel however they're allowed to feel. Subjective opinions are always correct. 
to that person. They might not be correct in a global sense, but they're always correct to that person. And telling someone that what they feel is wrong is likely to get them to say rude words at you. Because they're allowed to feel however they want to feel. That's my wallet. I want that one. No, you've just put it away. Oh, okay. Yeah. You have to click it once to put it away and then click it again to get something fresh out. It doesn't do the old switcheroo, you know, like they do in games. Um... And, yeah, and, and so, you know, you've got to take with a pinch of salt uh, all of these subjective opinions and you have to weigh them against how accurate is this? Is the, uh, is the perception being given back? Is it a majority view? Is it a very narrow view? Uh, is there validity in what they're saying? Uh, and whether you think there's validity or not is irrelevant you have to report it back. But the, what you don't report back is the players are saying, your game's crap, mate. No, because that's not gonna sit well and it's not gonna be taken seriously. You have to weigh it up and then balance it out into a reasoned perspective. Why don't they like it? There you go, that's a good place to start. Where do they think the problems are? How severe is that problem on a ranking of any other problems that are going on currently. Is it the thing that is on fire more than anything else? And there is always stuff on fire. The fires are always burning. I'm hoping there is track here, but it is well overgrown. Uh, it's all good, it's all good, it's all good, it's all good. It's all good, keep your eye on your speed. 30, 30 is enough. Um, so yeah, you're gathering all that feedback and you're giving it to the right people and you're doing it in such a way as to get the best result. And you might go, well, you want the best result for the players. And you kind of go, I also want the best result for the company, but more than anything else, I want the best result for me. For me, personally, as the messenger. And as you know already, the messenger is always shot. Uh, doesn't matter how much they like you in the best of times, come, the, come times that aren't quite the best, they're going to take their frustration out on you because it is your job to be the punching bag. Nobody else is going to do it, and nor, if you are born for this kind of caper, nor would you want anyone else to do it. If there is trouble in your community, you want to be the one to deal with it. Uh, and after you've built up a bit of experience, when there's trouble, that's the fun times. That's the good stuff. Because there is nothing better in the world as a community manager than reaching that moment where you've taken a few hostile people and you see them just tilt in your direction ever so slightly. And that will come from resolving the problem, making them feel like they're, they're heard, understood and validated. Making them feel as important as they feel that problem is to them. You might see the thing that is a pro that is not working right or just not working the way they want it. You might see it as completely unimportant. You might go, I don't know how anybody could get their knickers in a twist over this. And yet someone will. And that's fine. They're allowed to. Remember, there's no such thing as wrong subjectivity. Uh, and if you can get those people to feel validated and they swing to your side ever so slightly, you can get your job done. Most of what you are trying to do as a community manager is get the community to trust you. You individually, you personally. Not the company, too big an ask. Getting, getting them to trust the company they're going to bring along every preconception they've got. And those preconceptions breed from user to user. I don't exactly know where we're going. I'm hoping that the, uh, the points are all set to allow me to just cruise up through the centre of here. But I've not been here before, and therefore I'm not wholly certain of the route. I mean, basically, as long as we're going around to the right, generally speaking, we're going correctly. This is not taking you around to the right, dude that one was this is not going correctly all right brakes uh power off maybe yeah, okay it's okay we've only missed one junction i could reverse up here but i'm not going to because i'm not a doofus um yeah because I, I, you have currency you have currency within 
your your word, your word and your bond. Uh, you you try and establish currency within your word, so, because by doing so, you can leverage that when the chips are down. And by leverage it, I mean I'm on this. Please give me a couple of days to figure it out. And if the community believe in you and you've built up enough currency with them, they'll go, okay, you've got this. And they won't torch the place while you're not there. <sighs> not that those times exist. Because here's a fundamental. If you are a natural born, 100%, can't put it down community manager, once that becomes your community, you cannot put it down. Last thing you do before you go to bed. I'm just going to check on the community for a minute. First thing you do in the morning, just going to check in before I attend this thing, just to make sure that everything's fine. Uh, if you're up at three o'clock in the morning, I'm just going to stick my head in, uh, just to make sure everything's fine, because it's your house, and you take it personally. If things aren't going well in your house, you take that, you take that very, very personally. Um, you're going to want to use the loco brake here. Always use the back brake, not the front brake. Otherwise, you fly over the handlebars. You know that. Uh, right. York set correctly. You are the one I want to change. Right. And forwards. Four watts. Yes. And uh, D brake. D brake. Right. Give that a moment to think about what it's done. And off we go. Right. So. Um, uh, so yeah, so you're trying to get them to believe in you personally as a purveyor of reliable, useful and knowledgeable information. Now a good community manager doesn't necessarily need to know the game, doesn't need to know the game that well, they need to know it well enough. Uh, and they should look into learning the game as well as, as need be. Um, but being able to actually interact with people in a way that they find convincing in a way that they find uh, human and uh, and in a way that they find trustworthy is all important. Uh, yeah, I'm, there's a lot of ego involved in good, commu good, good community managers do have to have an ego. You have to take this stuff personally. Uh, and that's why it's so draining. Now, 10 years ago, yeah, 10 years ago or thereabouts, community managers started merging or started being given additional responsibilities, which I like to call, which are otherwise known in big enough companies as social media managers. They're not the same thing. Social media managers are marketing mouthpieces uh, with with a bit of a clean up crew, right? Uh, you know, they'll 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 take out the uh, the most negative comments that they do, uh, but fundamentally. They're taking a marketing message and they're pumping it out there. Right? Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all that kind of business. Marketing. More than anything else. Social media managers, social marketing managers, all of that kind of thing. And community managers sometimes get wrapped into the same thing. Which is why you end up with community managers who are little more than social media managers. Um, yeah, a, a community manager who is obviously a community manager should almost look like and sound like and uh, and uh, and, uh, and and have the same level of passion as the community they're talking to. Uh, social media managers, they're they're not the same thing, no, because it's marketing and community. As much as as often as community sits within marketing, it's not the same thing at all. We are not there to convince you to buy something. That is not our job. We will we'll present it in a in a positive light. We'll you know we'll show it off as well as we can show stuff off. Uh, we will talk stuff. We'll never deliberately give what we're working on a public kicking. Um, but at the same time, we've got to be honest. I used to do. I used to be community manager for FIFA. And the thing with FIFA. And Madden, right? Okay, to put them to make it transatlantic. Uh, the, the thing with Madden and FIFA is there'll be another one along next year. 
how are you how are you supposed to and and the marketeers every year they would struggle to go what's our angle what's our, what's our angle this year how do we how do we convince people to buy this one when uh, it's just uh, last one with a, a couple of dangly new features in there and without exception and uh, you know it's a tough job don't don't be mean to marketing people they're fine and often they're quite fun people too not big gamers I'll have to say the majority of marketing people I've come across they tend to be uh, hit hit to uh, hit gamers right so they'll you know play their Call of Duty play their FIFA play their Need for Speed all of that kind of stuff right nothing wrong with that they are gamers anybody who tries gatekeeping you are you are not a gamer naughty step no you don't get to make that decision. Since Farmville came along, gamer means many things to many people. And let me tell you, Farmville was a great game. Oh, it was a purveyor of social media and you know, horror stories. And it also uh, destroyed Facebook by demonstrating here's why you can't have nice things when it comes to notifications. But at the same time, it was a great game. And obviously compelling, which is so, why so many people played it, including me. Um, we're off track get back on it again yeah no gatekeeping what is and is not a gamer if you decide that only you are the arbiter of what is a true gamer then you're the problem right someone uh, you know some 69 year old woman who enjoys playing a match three game on their iphone that their granddaughter gave to them she's not the problem you are right now shut up and back in your box uh, yeah, where were you going with that? Oh, I'm marketing people. Yeah, marketing people. They're often quite a lot of fun, but you can't have conversations about games with them. You can't go, oh, what are you playing at the moment? I go, uh, oh, not much. I played a bit of FIFA last month. And you kind of go, okay. Where all you want to talk about is the latest indie rubbish that you picked up off Steam for a tenner. Um, not to say that indie titles are rubbish, far from it. Often indie titles are more innovative than you'll ever see in the mainstream games industry. Thank you. Because they can afford to be more risky. Um, yeah, when you're able to support a company of thousands or tens of thousands, or, or even hundreds, risk is not something you can do without being very careful about it. When it's just you and your spare time, you can be as innovative as you ruddy well like. Uh, yeah, it's never rubbish. Although some of it ends up being rubbish, but it's never rubbish. It's always interesting. Uh, right, we're nearly there, aren't we? Yeah. Uh, well, we want to go left here. We are doing. Um, yeah, onwards. So, yeah, the marketing people, well, they would be trying to come up with what's our angle for this year's campaign. And without fail, every year, the way that they spoke about the game was, and I paraphrase, this is the last game you will ever need to buy. It is the perfect game in every possible conceivable way. There is no game that can ever be superior to this. You're never going to want to play anything else. This is the game. The last one. No more games after this one because this one, oh my gosh, is the game. Forget other games. They're dead to you now. This is the last game you're ever going to need. I'd, my mind just goes completely blank when I think about what features could possibly be added. None. There are no features. It has all the features for all time, ever. Never will there be another game as good as this one. This is the ultimate game. You would be mad to miss out on it. Get this game. It is the ultimate game. And, I mean... Hand on heart, it's perfect. That's marketing, right? As community management, what we'd then go is we'd, we'd let the marketing message get out there. The community would start to chat about it on the forum and we'd start just tempering their expectation back down. Because as it stands, the fine, fine people of marketing have set the expectations for this game as uh, as being the, the the meta review score as being 12 out of 10 that's how good they have painted it to be a 12 out of 10 game do you need me to spell out that there's no such thing as a 12 out of 10 game 
that perfection is impossible, we really ought to be looking up where we're going. That's switch. No. Put that back in its box. Go find this. Right. Where are we going? That's what I'm looking up. We're going to machine factory in town. I've got that much. No, you missed page three, which is the important bit. We're going to C4 in. Good. Where's that? Go to the station map. Oh, God. Right. Machine, factory, town, etc. Here we go. Alright, I want the I want the overview. I need to know if I if I needed to go the other way at the last bit. Um Dunno. Okay. I think we're going to want to turn right at this next opportunity to swing down C. Might be wrong, don't know. Let's have a look. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, in a marketing sense, they're doing their job. They have to do their job, otherwise you don't pay them. If they're not going to try and flog the thing, why are you even paying them in the first place? So, so they're doing their job. Um, but we would start to walk stuff down. And we'd walk it back in the sense of, yeah, I've seen it in action. That's quite cool. Not really cool, no. Quite cool. And they kind of go, oh, I did really like the way that they've done this. You could pick out something and go, oh, yeah, it's ace. Because... You want to be credible and if you're going like my goodness me it really is the last game i'm ever going to need to buy i agree totally the last game um it's just that's totally non-credible anyway you then get the holiday period and the holiday period is just after announce before gameplay has been shown off and certainly before they've got their hands on it uh because at that point the community are inventing the game in the back of their head using whatever images, video, and the rest of it they've been able to get their hands on. They are designing that game for themselves. And it's creeping up uh, away from... You've, you've managed to beat them down from it being a 12 out of 10 game to a 10 out of 10 game. You won't beat them down any further than that, sorry. Um, uh, unless you go brutally honest, in which case you'll be fired. If you go brutally honest and kind of go, it's just last year's game with a new lick of paint. What do you want from me? No. They, that, you, that, that'll have you slung out on your ear. So you do need some self-preservation in there. Uh, so yeah, they still think it's a 10 out of 10 at this point. Uh, and then they're designing the game for themselves. And if those conversations start spiralling out of control, you've got to be on top of them. If they start putting in features, oh, wouldn't it be cool if it did X, Y, Z? Now, community members never read each other's posts properly. They're just waiting for their turn to talk, at which point it's as quickly as they can flap their little hands all over the keyboard. Um, uh, so they they read your post by skim reading it and, uh, and then go like, oh yeah, I heard it has all of these features that you said wouldn't it be cool if it... No, 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 apparently it's got those now. And... As, uh, as Mr. Churchill said, uh, the lie has gone all the way around the world before the truth has its trousers on. Well, that's doubly so on the internet. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's just, oh, dearie me. Um, conspiracy theories, man. Oh, I could talk to you about conspiracy theories, but I won't. Uh, and so you're trying to keep that under control, but you're in the honeymoon period, right? They're, they're designing the game for themselves. They've got it. Now, with FIFA, when... When the game comes out, you then enter a period of up to 14 days. No longer than 14 days, up to 14 days. That's how long the happiness will last. Uh, the happiest your gamers will ever be is two days before the game comes out. Yeah, they will never be any happier than that point. If you want to give your notice in, give it in so that your last day is going to be two days before the game comes out. Uh, if you do it after the game comes out, you're running the risk of, of them being miserable. Uh, if you do it too much before then, you don't, you don't get that halcyon period of, uh, of joy. And the reason they're so happy is because uh, they're about to buy and play the last game they ever need to buy and play. Right, we're going looking for, what was it? C. 4. C. 4. Right, let's go. You sunk my battleship. Not yet, I didn't. Give me a chance. Signposts. Anywhere, I think you've possibly teleported past them. Oh, flaming egg. Right, okay, where are we? These are not labelled. That doesn't bode well. No. 
Trains? Yes. Where's the ruddy yard? Oh, hold on, there's some yard over here. Right, okay, what have we got here? That's five. Five what? Hold on, no, no, no speed limit. Oh, okay. This is C1. <gasps> it's over here. Right. That's B1. Oh, his, oh I see his C. Right. Yeah. C1, 2, 3, 4. Right, set the points for all of this. Then figure out where your train is. Then get a train going over here. All right. Okay. Yeah. Good. Right. Okay. We found it. Now we just got to do it. Uh, give me the uh, dingle dangle. Thank you. Right. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Up to 14 days after it comes out. Uh, the, the happiness will be declining immediately. Um, but after 14 days, what am I doing here? No, you don't want to do that. You want to do this. There you go. Um, after 14 days, they will have found the problems with the game. Yep, without without exception. Any problems that exist in the game, they will have found it in under 14 days. At which point, the good mood is dead. Forever. No more good mood for you. Some people will remark on, ah, it's no different than last year. And you kind of go, yes, you knew that. Uh, and yet you bought it anyway. And somehow you had deluded yourself into, no, it's going to be completely different. And you kind of go, why did you even delude yourself? Why? Uh, I mean, you're a grown-up. You could, you've got, you know, some semblance of critical thinking. If you weren't going to be happy with it's more or less the same as the thing I already liked, then why are you here? Why have you done this to yourself and now you're doing it to me? Um, anyway, after 14 days, they'll have found the things that are wrong with it. And, uh, and then beginneth the wailing and the gnashing of teeth. And then you get into the trickiest part of being a community manager. I know, it's all tricky, but here's the trickiest part. Is you have to represent their take on things internally. Right? You have to be able to tell the, uh, the publishing team, you have to be able to tell the development team, and sometimes, if it's a big deal, you've got to be able to tell the CEO, who earns at least ten times as much as you do. Uh, and while doing this, you have to maintain a cool and professional demeanour. Cool and professional. And that's fine. To start with, piece of cake. You're putting your early, your, your early community reports together. They are a little disappointed that when pressing launch game, it explodes their computer. Okay? Right. Because you can do that the first time. After two weeks, uh, there's still discussion going on about, like, this computer exploding issue. Maybe we should do something about that. Brakes are off, right? Certainly seems to be off. We're not getting much punch here. Sand. Oh, we've got a bit of a minor bit of uphill. Come on, unk Tantor, unk. Right, good. Uh, yeah. So a couple of weeks pass. There's a whole the, the opening to my book when I write about uh, about community management and gamers. Uh, the opening chapter of my book is called Time, and the reason for this is that time moves at different speeds depending on who you are in the games industry. If you're a if you're a developer, um, uh, soon means a month, six weeks from now. If you're a gamer, soon means next couple of days. Yeah. Oh, and there's an entire chat. I could write an entire book on the word soon. Um, and I teach people to use the word soon as much as possible. If you've ever seen anyone use soon with the trademark after it, I was the first one to do that. Uh, and I think that can be proved as well. Anyway, it was back in 2001. So uh, if anybody thinks they can predate that, they can't. Or if they can, they did it in parallel to when I was doing it first. People, people found it hilarious because we were using soon so very often. Um, yeah, but if you ever see that done, that was me. My fault. Sorry, you're welcome. Um, you've, you didn't set that junction. You didn't say you want to be you want to be over there. You want to be you want to be over there. Do you want to put the brakes on and try it again? Only better. You flaming galah. 
All right, okay, yeah. Yeah, you'd got all the points set apart from the first one. This is B. This is no good. No, 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 no. Nobody wants these wagons up. I'm going to finish this before I wrap the uh, wrap the story up for the day. Uh, I'm largely done on the elements of community management I am prepared to talk about today. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to burn through what I would teach people on the course. I teach people how to be a community manager. Um, I do a, at the short end, three-hour training course. At the long end, full-day training course on how to manage a community. Anyway, after, after two weeks, the community is screaming non-stop all the time. Uh, you've done your best to shut down petition threads. Petition threads. <laughs> uh, never allow a petition thread to exist. Kill it immediately. You know why? Because it has absolutely no value. It has zero value to anyone at all. No value to the gamers, no value to the company, and it is just the easiest dog pile you will ever come across. And it does never, it never goes anywhere useful and never anywhere fun. And it just becomes argumentative and the second, seventh circle of hell. The thing you want more than anything else is for the community not to be yelling at each other. That makes it even worse. Yelling at you, you have some control over that. Yelling at each other, it gets out of hand. Um, but yell, yelling at you is okay. You've just got to grin it, sit there, grin, bear it. Uh, until you decide to jack it in and go and work in marketing. Because uh, that's an easy life. And you've got a massive budget. And you paid quite well. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm not dissing marketeers. I'm just saying, easy life. Uh, developers, by and large, easy life. Except uh, that they do get to work quite a lot of hours. And they do have to put in quite a lot of training to get to that point. But what they don't have is 10,000 people all screaming at them all the time and calling them every name under the sun and occasionally sending you death threats. You don't, know, you don't get that quite as often. Unless you decide to be a developer with a Twitter account. Those are the worst developers. Developers with ego. Developers who want to be the next internet superhero. Oh boy. Yeah, because you can't fire them. Nope. Community managers who want to be the next superhero of the internet. You can fire them, that's fine. You can just chuck them out. As soon as they put one foot wrong, give them the boot. Uh, and you look golden, and you've lost nobody irreplaceable. Uh, but, you know, your, your superstar developer, and they're a little bit... <sighs> I could do social media, it's easy. Bloody isn't. It really, really isn't. Look at how many people self-destruct on social media. It is not easy. It is to be used very carefully oh incidentally while I've got your attention if you're the type of person in their Twitter profile that writes all opinions are my own I would like to counter that with if you work for my company and you put out uh, an, an opinion that is different to the policies of that company your ass will be fired so you're secondly if you're applying for a job with me, I will check out all of your social media profile stuff. And if you've got that written in your social media profile, I'm going to go over it with a magnifying glass. I'm going to look up everything. Because what is it about the stuff you post on social media you think people might find objectionable? So, it's twofold. Number one, it is not a bulletproof vest. You are accountable. For everything you write, you're accountable for it. And writing a cheeky little sentence in your in your Twitter profile does not get you off the hook. Okay? Ever. Never. It never gets you off the hook. All right? That's number one. And uh, number two, if you have written that in there, that is a red flag that says, hello, I'm a racist. All right? Or... I occasionally like to post pornography. You kind of go like, yeah, all right, okay. I'm going to go check because I'm going to go check. Yeah, you better believe that I'm checking because you've just said you're going to object to something that I post in here. Warning. So, go and update your Twitter profile because what you've written there is... is 
It's at best inadvisable. At worst, it's downright suicide. We got paid all 13,800 there. That's not bad. Get me wallet out. That's not bad at all. I'll take the cha-ching, please. Cha-ching! We've made profit, kids. We're in profit again. The game development is perfect. Everything about the game is perfect. Uh, talk to me about fees. 7,600 in fees. Which means I can't buy a license till I've paid that off. Ah. All right, well, why don't you do another run? I've only got half a tank of fuel, and you can't do refueling independently until you've got the license that lets you do that. Because then you can run all your trains down until they're sparking and the metal is all bought, you know, warm thin. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, just to wrap things up here. Uh, go on. No, I'm not. Am I paying it? Yeah, I'm paying it. Do you have manual? No, I don't have manual bloody service. Because uh, it's a bad scene man yeah okay put that away hit that good right now give me a license which license are you going for manual chuffing servicing that's what i want Doop, beep, boop, boop. yes please insert my wallet right and then i'll never complain about that again because i've got it now sweet uh no get in the bin i'll put myself in the bin as well which seems to be the right place for it um yeah last thing on the subject community management uh, community managers burn out and they burn out after about two years if they're working on a high profile project uh, that involves a lot of screaming um, and the, at the point that they burn out all of the, the bright eyed sparkliness goes out of them and instead they hate the community, they hate all the players and they want to blow them up, they'll round them up put them in a field and bomb them thank you Kenny Everett um, and uh, the really good ones come back out the other side of it uh, the ones who are not cut out for it, they go and do a different job. It's fine. Uh, it is the litmus test. Uh, <laughs> the litmus test is, after you start hating them, do you come back again? You go, yeah. And then you love them and hate them at the same time. And you've got to. You've got to love them and hate them at the same time. You've got to do it. Uh, it, it can make you a bit irascible, but at the same time, you've got to have that relationship. You can You can hate how unreasonable they are. Uh, but love them at the same time. We love them for their passion and love them for the enthusiasm that they've got. And they will make you laugh. And they will show you appreciation on a regular basis. You know, they're not a bunch of meanies, but uh, they are a bunch of meanies. They really, really are. Uh, but I love them. Love games, gamers. Love them to bits. Hate them. Love them. Love them and hate them at the same time. Uh, and there you go. And there's that. That's it. And I'm not a community manager anymore, but I can't stop being one. Except, of course, I have got this community called Fail Brigade. Which is a classic Colonel Failure community. It's one that I just built because I quite like being surrounded by people who get it. Who, do, who just get it. Uh, the fact that you're kicking in a couple of bucks a month, that helps too. But uh, but fundamentally, you get it and you, you see it. And you, you kind of you embrace the dipstickedness of what it is that I'm doing. Um, so there you go and actually if you're watching a video like this then you probably get it as well you'd like Fail Brigade you know you'd probably get on alright with it uh, anyway I've been mean, Colonel Failure McGilly great question I mean you knew it was going to be a long answer so there you go uh, anyway I don't know what I'm doing for my next adventure but it will involve weeding through these barely any job offers and throwing most of them in the bin so there's that to look forward to I'll catch up with you next time thanks for watching cheerio